All right, the Bulls are back. The Bulls are back. People forget this, but not Buzz from Bulls on Tap. Buzz, good evening, sir. How are you? Hey, man, thanks for having me. I'm excited to come on and talk some Bulls basketball with you because we're actually relevant again. So it's nice to uh, be back in that in that world of relevancy. You are relevant again, but there has been a bit of a skid, injuries and other things. Are you? How are you feeling about the current fall a little bit? Like you're not a number one seed anymore, and now you're kind of fighting for home court like that's a that's a big thing i mean united center being what it is what what are your current feelings about the chicago bulls team i mean i just think you know the like you said the injuries have uh piled up here um Mm -hmm. and it's not easy to rebound when you're missing two of your best defenders and lonzo ball and alex caruso when caruso was in the lineup the bulls were tops in the nba in defensive efficiency when we lost him we drive i mean it's funny because it's one guy and it's a guard Mm -hmm but we literally fell all the way down to the twenties in defensive efficiency. We still have a top 10 offense. Uh, Once we get these guys back, which news came out today that Caruso's supposedly being cleared for contact again. So he should be back at the end of March or, you know, at least mid March, he should be back. So, um, but with the injuries, Alonzo ball, you know, Alex Caruso, I mean, we, we lost Levine for a hot minute with his knee injury, which turned into back spasms. I and mean, this team has fought a lot of adversity. And what people don't realize, it feels like two seasons within one, because at the beginning of the year, we were losing all these guys due to COVID. So then they come back and they get injured. The fact that this team held on to first place as long as they did is pretty impressive and a testament to how good Billy Donovan's coaching is. What's been the biggest difference with Donovan from Boylan? Oh, just being competent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth, man. It's just, I, I got to meet Jim Boylan a couple times. He's a nice dude. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to hate on him. Um, it's just, you come in and you coach like you're coaching children. And that's just not the name of this game. You're coaching grown men. Um, the punch clock was a cute idea. Sure. Whatever. <laughs> um, if you're into that kind of thing, but I, I think competency is the biggest difference and, you know, experience too. Billy Donovan has coached superstars before. Um, you know, and then he was being, he was a part of a rebuild in OKC, you know, when they had traded Russ away and KD had left and all that, you know, he, it's just, he was a part of both of these worlds. And again, I just think he's a a lot more seasoned of a coach who's ready for this kind of challenge. So, uh, Billy came in and and really got this team to buy into his philosophy and it's paying dividends. What about scheme wise? What does Billy Donovan do? Like, uh, like you said, he's has experience working with superstars. He has a, just a plethora of experience developing young guys, which is great for the folks like uh, Patrick Williams. Um, but what on the court has been different? What have you noticed that they're running better? And obviously part of it has to be, we have to include the fact that this is a different roster in mm-hmm. a lot of regards, that there are a lot of new faces but Levine did have a breakout year last year. Like he, like he still was a great player. So I think Boylan, not to put too much uh, emphasis on what Boylan did for the Chicago Bulls, but that was something that did happen under his watch was Levine taking that next step. What has Billy Donovan done to build off that and to acclimate other guys, like you said, with Lonzo, with Caruso, uh, with DeMar DeRozan, who we haven't even mentioned yet, how has he been able to make this all work? What is what does he run the court that really stands out that people who have not been able to watch every Bulls game that you do, that you see? Well, I mean, he ran a lot of high and lows with Vooch. Uh, that was mm-hmm. something to try to get Vooch going. Also, as well, I, I, I don't really want to speak on the offense so much. I want to speak, speak on how the defense turned into offense. He got these hmm. guys to buy in with having guys like Lonzo Ball, who at one time was leading in the league in, uh, in deflected passes You know, before he went out. And a guy like Alex Crusoe together, those guys turn literally by swarming the uh, the offensive player created these deep these turnovers, which tr- turned into transition points for the Bulls, which they were top five in before they went down. Mm-hmm. That's what Billy really sold to me this year. Is they all said Jim Boylan is a defensive kind of guy. Like think about Tibbs too when he was here in Chicago, he was a defensive guy. I've never really seen that come to fruition more than I have with Billy. Of course. Tibbs was a defensive guy, but that didn't really turn into offense. That was give Derrick Rose the ball and get out of the way. You know, huh. with with Billy this year, I've seen this defense turn into offense when healthy. Because now, right now we're not playing any defense mm. at all. It's pretty it's pretty bad. But when those guys were healthy, defense turned into offense, got their guys in their sets. There wasn't a ton of ISO ball. I know that DeRozan and Levine were scoring a lot, but those guys were get, catching the ball and shooting it. And it was working out real well. Yeah, of course, they take over, get into the paint, make some things happen. But Billy had a well-rounded machine on offense. And it was working. Unfortunately, again, when you start piling up with injuries, you kind of forget how it looks because we mm-hmm. haven't seen it for over a month. 
you know, a month and a half, really. Patrick Williams, though, what what do you want? Like, as a Bulls fan and analyst, like, it's such an interesting situation to be in with him because he obviously was a high lottery pick, high expectations. He's shown flashes. But now you're – we saw this a little bit in Atlanta, like me being an Atlanta guy when Trey Young, and you make that Eastern Conference Finals bump. It's like, sorry, Cam, we have no time for you anymore. Like, Cam Reddish, we just don't have time. Um, that's why Patrick Williams found himself in trade rumors, and it was like, oh, would you give up Patrick Williams for a Jeremy Grant to fill out this veteran-heavy uh, starting five and closing five? Um, instead, he's still a bull. He's still your your most exciting, I guess we should say, young player uh, on this roster. And he might come back, but prior to the injuries, um, they were really clicking without Patrick Williams. Do you do you think it's fair to bring him in if he is able to for a playoff series? Like, is he someone that you would want back in there and thrown into the fire like that at this point? Or would you rather Patrick Williams not return this year? If he's healthy, play. Um, okay. I like I love Javante Green, um, you know, and he's been he got most of the starts in, you know, Williams absence, which is still going on. Uh, Tristan mm-hmm. Thompson had gotten a couple in a row there too, after we got him on the buyout market, but uh, Patrick Williams is supposed to be the most skilled out of those players. So I want the most skilled on the court. Um, and, and back to your question about how I feel about Patrick Williams. I don't know. Um, he didn't show me a lot in his rookie year. He, he had some flashes of course, but you know, when you play 71 games, which it was last year because of the COVID, you know, how COVID was, you know, he didn't show me a lot. He showed me some things, but not a lot. And then in the summer league this year, a lot of Bulls fans were like, oh, my God, look what he's doing. He's scoring. Did you see the percentages he shot? I, I would sure hope so. He's playing against guys that look like me out there. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like, I'm, you know, like or rookies or like, you know, two second year players that are trying to make their name. And then the first five games this season before he went down after that shot from Mitchell Robinson against the Knicks that has taken him out up until this point. He looked lost, had a couple moments again in five games where you're like, okay, yeah, okay, we see it. He goes down with an injury, but I've never seen – he was a fourth pick in the draft. He went after Anthony Edwards. He went after James Wiseman and LaMelo Ball. So people have to forgive me as a Bulls fan and analyst or whatever that I have a salty taste in my mouth because I was ready to trade the bank for LaMelo. I I, Mm -hmm. I was ready to trade – anybody not named Zach Levine is who I was trading for LaMelo Ball. Um, That's what I wanted to do. Anyway, Mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, there was just that drop off there. And if Patrick Williams ends up working out, he ends up working out. But right now I don't see it personally as a Bulls fan. I don't know what's there, but again, in fairness, I don't have a lot of film on him to be able to see what he could have done this year. Maybe he would have broke out of it and found his place in this new offense. He did kind of go through a total team transformation from year one to two. So he could be great. He might not be able to, but the most exciting young player on this team, I don't think is Patrick Williams. I think it's Iota Sumi. Okay. So that that's my Well, it's it's I guess he's exciting in a totally different way though, right? Like the the kind of player that he is and what he can be. It's like Io just has a ceiling. Like he's like Patrick Williams theoret the theoretical Patrick Williams is significantly higher than the theoretical AO. And okay. it's kind of like with DeAndre Hunter, where it was like theoretical DeAndre Hunter is fine like he's he's a good player he'll play in the league for 15 years whatever theoretical cam reddish is like paul george like it's yeah, just that, a different i thought yeah yeah i'm with you so oh, but the thing is deandre hunter is still a hawk and cam reddish is not right. um theoretical is only cool for so long but with ao he's just i mean he's obviously an illinois kid and he's just a great story uh in the chicago area but what has he done um for folks that because it's not he's not a box score guy he's not someone you can just look at the box score and understand why he's plus 11 on a random tuesday night like he is someone that you have to watch the entire game to understand how he's affecting it and what he is doing who would you compare him to that you've seen across the league to this point and what have you seen that just has been like okay this dude's a player and he's actually should be in our long-term plans as far as the comparison goes, like my old man likes to say he's Patrick Beverly with a jump shot with the his, the way that he plays defense, you know, and Patrick yeah. Beverly's another Chicago guy. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's kind of cool. That's what he, what he likes to say as far as watching him on the night, uh, you know, on a nightly basis and, and things that he does that impresses me is we have to understand he, he is a second round rookie. Mm-hmm. Um, he was robbed of the first round. I believe that I watched a ton of Illinois basketball, not just because I'm from here. It's just because, you know, I love college ball and, Illinois is my team, whatever. But mm. I mean, he was 
really good there. And there's a reason he was Big Ten Player of the Year. You know, there's a reason for that. This year, with the injuries that came from this team and how he was thrust into this rotational spot and then all of a sudden the starting spot, and mm-hmm. when he's done with that, he's got like three or four double-doubles to his name as a rookie. He's playing alongside guys like DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine, helping them win ball games, and he's doing the things, little things, that Lonzo and Caruso kind of did too by playing that defense. He's obviously not as good as them yet, and maybe he will be one day. Um, another big thing about him too, is I think that he was a really sneaky shooter for a lot of people because I, I was not, you know, deemed a three point shooter when he was in college by any means necessary. And this kid is shooting 40% from three on 2.3 attempts per game. So when DeMar and Zach are getting their opportunities to work, I was hitting his shots and it, it's just working out for him. I know the, uh, you know, if you go down and you look at his, um, his numbers, 8.4 points per game isn't, you know, sexy or anything like that. But if you go through his starting numbers, you'll see that this kid's actually a problem and he could be a starter in the league. So I'm excited that we have him. Is would Bulls fans be just devastated if y'all lose in the first round, like based on where you're sitting right now, because of the kind of season that you've had, that you were in the number one spot for so long, you've, like some people were like, oh, they can maybe be a play-in team. I imagine that before the season, Bulls fans were not expecting to be as good as you were right away. And you were just positive. You're like, it should be better, but we're not going to run the East for the majority of the regular season. And now the expectations get raised. And not to bring everything back to Atlanta, but this is something that happened this year with the Hawks, where you go to the Eastern Conference Finals when you're not supposed to, and then you have the season from hell, and now it's just like the sky is falling, and so no one's happy. There's not one happy Atlanta Hawk right now, a fan right now. And I just wonder, like, if you don't win a first round playoff series, especially with just the De- Demar Derozan stuff, and just how much fun and how incredible of a story it's been for them, and his playoff narrative. Like, we just have to talk about that. It's like Demar Derozan's playoff history is that, like, I'm just so fascinated. About by what happens with Chicago in the postseason because the East is a bloodbath and it's going to require nuance. Like the East is not like the West this year where the West is top four seeds are all going to win. It, it, there's a huge discrepancy between the top half and the bottom half in the East. I mean, you have Brooklyn sitting there at the bottom. You They're have the play. <laughs> yeah. Like that's the play in man. It's nuts. The Hawks could get in there and the yeah. Hawks with a healthy Hawks team down. Like they, no one wants to play Trey young in a seven game series. Like they still don't want that. Um, I, I just think there's going to require some nuance if they do go down to like a red hot Boston team, or if Philly falls down a little bit, or I mean, Cleveland in a bloodbath series, I think Cleveland would probably hurt the most, um, if they were to lose a first round series, but I don't know what, what, what do, what is your perspective and what are the fans perspective about that possibility? Total disclosure. I'm a Homer, like to the (laughs) max. So just. I thought that they were going to be way better this year. Listen, when you have talent okay. like Vucevic, DeRozan, and Levine on the court after Levine's year last year, and the DeRozan hate was misplaced. Go look at his numbers in San Antonio. Dude was doing things over there too. It's just not it was on a big scale. He didn't have ta- a ton of talent around him. Mm-hmm. You know, it is what it is. It's just the truth. I didn't think he'd be a superstar, though. I'll tell you that. Like He, he mm-hmm. has played like a superstar for a majority of this year. Um, so I thought that they would be good. I thought that they were a, definitely a top six. I did not think they were a play-in team. And I and even putting the homer aside, I really thought that looking up and down at the roster. Um, the only thing that bothered me about the Bulls was size, and that is still plaguing us to this day, mm-hmm. um, is the, the lack of size on the team in its entirety. Um, as far as getting into the playoffs and a first-round exit being a bad thing, well, yeah, I mean, that would suck for sure. That would That's not ideal. But at the end of the day, we haven't been there since 2017. This is good experience for younger guys that are on the team. But then you also have like, that's like the good, you know, angel on your shoulder. Then here's like the demon on your shoulder. It's like, wow, this sucks because Vooch is getting older. DeRozan's getting older. You don't know if you're going to get another season like this out of DeMar DeRozan again. Because again, I think he could be good next season. Do I think he is going to be great within MVP consideration? I wouldn't put money on it. Let's just say that. Um, so I don't want to say a first round loss would be a total disappointment because again, you know, Zach has never made the playoffs before, you know, um, we, we do have a young team kind of, so it's just, as a fan, I would hate it because I love that atmosphere of being at United center being a season ticket holder is nothing else. Like it's like nothing else it's just being at United center when the bulls are winning. Um, but I, I wouldn't like want to go play in traffic if they got, you know, 
if they got bounced either. I understand the trials and tribulations they went through this season, and it's hard to rebound from that no matter what kind of team you are. And I am in the minority of Bulls fans, I think, or maybe it's not the minority. Maybe it's split down the middle and half and half that I don't think we have a true superstar on the team. Mm -hmm. I think that we have stars on the team and there's a distinct difference. I'm sure you, you know, this, you have a budding superstar on your team. Mm -hmm. You have a guy like Trey young that can go get you 40, 12 assists and four boards and he can do it while shooting 46% from the field and like 38% from downtown. You have that guy. Bulls don't have a guy like that. So everything needs to be clicking for them to make a deep run. It can't be this guy is struggling. That can't happen. If it happens, mm -hmm. it ain't going to work. But right. I, I fear that that's the problem already, dude. Uh, honestly, Jay, that's the problem is because Zach Levine has said he's only at 70 or 80% right now. Bulls ain't going anywhere if that's the case. Mm. Well, now I'm curious. Um, Chicago, look at you. This is a sidebar, and then we'll wrap up with DeRozan. Um how would you rank like when they're all like at their best, you got the socks behind you, yeah. socks, bulls, Blackhawks, bears mm -hmm. in terms of atmosphere for folks who have not experienced that in Chicago, what is, how would you rank them in the building? Oh God, that's tough, man. That's a fun conversation to have though. Um, I would have to say that soldier field when the bears are killing it mm -hmm. is, is that'll rock you to your core, man. Hmm. I, I, honest to God, this is a football city. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Bears season ticket holder as well. So, I mean, it, it's just that's what it, it's a football city, even though they're not my favorite team in the city. I mean, I love the Bears, but I hate them so much because they hurt me constantly. Mm -hmm. But that stadium is is rocking. The United Center was selling out even when we sucked. Right. And was You're always, always at number one. Yeah. yeah. And it was always rocking. So I would have to say that. And then the White Sox, I would say they have the most devoted fan base, even though it's small. Mm -hmm. It's very small. It doesn't sell out the stadium. It's very small. But that fan base, I feel like, is the most passionate about their team. Huh. It, it's it, it, honestly, it's very, very odd. As far as the Cubs, I won't talk about the Cubs because I'm from the <laughs> South Side, so I can't, mm -hmm. do, I can't do that. <laughs> but yeah, I would definitely say it was Bears, Bulls, Sox, probably. So Blackhawks nowhere to be found. You know, there. I guess when they were they were winning cups, though, man. Yeah. When, when I was a kid, like I'm 30, so when mm -hmm. I was a kid, they weren't even on TV because the dad yeah. wouldn't uh, put on home games. He wanted people to go, uh, whatever the first Wurtz name was. Yeah. Um, so he, they were not big, obviously huh. when they started winning Stanley cups that completely mm -hmm. changed, but it's, it's not a hockey town here. It's never been a hockey town. It's, it's not a hockey town. Um, but when they were winning, of course they had support. So yes, it was rocking at the United center for that too. But I wouldn't say the Blackhawks, you know, for most of my childhood and my adulthood, they weren't really very popular until they started winning them stanley cops so huh um i just i don't know how you do the bear stuff in november december i don't know how you sit outside <laughs> for three like i the chicago cold is a different type of cold oh yeah it and hurts your face so you don't even like you're being from chicago you don't yeah. get used to it you don't get used to the chicago winners oh i mean dude it's it's terrible i mean i'm not gonna yeah i'm not even lie to you i mean everybody's like oh it's bear weather no dude bear weather sucks <laughs> it's cold it hurts everything hurts but I'm, I'm, I do have that mentality though. I'm not used to it. Like th this year, for example, there was mm -hmm. a game where it was negative 10 outside. We, we got in the car, we drove down there at six in the morning. Game started at noon. We got mm -hmm. into our lot. We tailgated, we grilled up food, drank some beers and then head into the stadium, froze to death. We lost. And then we went home. It, but I mean, it sucks the whole time you're out there, but it, it's fun. Cause you're with your friends, you know I mean? It's just, I would definitely recommend doing it once. Cause just yeah, to, just to try it out, but yeah, well, it's just dress warm. Yeah, how many layers are we talking here? Like, I'm I'm a skinny dude. I'm a runner, man. Like, I think I would need nine to ten layers. I think I'm just the I'm the bubble boy at that point, where I'm just <laughs> I I don't know how else I could do it. Yeah, I might die. It's uh like probably you know three pairs of socks with uh, those little hot hand sticky things that you could stick on the bottom of your socks. Do those work? I've never yeah, used them. Yes, I'm... they do, dude. Yeah, huh. they really do. I've used them snowmobiling before. I only went snowmobiling twice, actually. And I used uh -huh. them both times. My feet were great. So I, I did huh. it at the game, and it worked. Um, a pair of insulated boots, uh, about three pairs of long johns, insulated <laughs> pants, three uh, or insulated pants, uh, as many layers as you can put on where you're not like this, and go out and have a good time. That's just that's how we three do three pairs of long johns. 
Oh yeah. Goodness gracious. I don't know, man. That's so much clothes. That's so much clothing. <laughs> I told you. It uh, <laughs> there you fun. go. <laughs> Um, we'll end on this. Um, DeRozan, though, yeah. MVP type season. Yep. For someone like you who have watched every game, what has he done that's transformed this Bulls offense? That's led them, especially in uh, Levine's absence. What has made this season so special for DeRozan, for for you and for Bulls fans? I want to say for Bulls fans, it's the chip on the shoulder mentality. Listen, DeRozan. Mm-hmm. DeRozan has kind of had a rough time after he got traded from Toronto and Kawhi went there first year. Kawhi's there. What do they do? They win a title. Yeah. He gets banished to San Antonio for a little bit. Doesn't really go the way he wants it to go. He's not getting recognition there. I feel like a lot of chip on the shoulder type stuff with DeMar DeRozan. So of course that this city is going to embrace that, you know, Mm -hmm. Chicago's blue collar, you know, tough people. That's that's what they say, you know, and, and a lot of fan of the fan base embraces that him coming here though. I, think is a lot bigger than what he did for Chicago I feel like it's kind of like what he did for the league I mean he brought the mid-range back man like he made that cool again uh, to take a midi because when when Boylan was here back to him and I'm not sure how familiar you are with this he Mm -hmm. told Kobe White who is our backup point guard he came out of North Carolina I'm sure you already know that Mm -hmm. Um, but he told Kobe White at the rim or behind the perimeter nope I don't want a mid-range shot out of you. You, mm. you changed that whole kid's game when he did that. Mm-hmm. So something like DeRozan coming out and averaging 28 points a game while he is like shooting under two three-pointers a game. <laughs> and he, you know, it's amazing. He's shooting 50% from the field. He's just completely had a great season. Um, I, I wish I could tell you what brought it out of him, but maybe it is the chip on the shoulder thing. Because DeRozan hits a lot of tough shots. If you watch a Bulls game, like I, I will yell at the TV. I'm not even <laughs> I'll be like, dude, why are you, why are you Kobe and on him right now? Mm. And he just, it just goes in and you're like, okay, well now I can't really be mad about it because it went in and just consistently over and over again. It's just what he's done all year. And plus, you know, the, the veteran leadership out of him, the, he's been around the block. He's been in the playoffs. He's played with all-star teammates before. I really think that that helped. And with the younger players on this team, I think they gravitated towards him. Another guy to bring up again, Io. Io and him are very close. He went to Io's, huh. jer- yeah, he went to Io's uh, jersey retirement ceremony at the University of Illinois this season. They've been spotted working out together. Const- they're together all the time. So I think mm-hmm. that was a big thing that DeMar did was bring these teammates under his wing. I think that that gave them confidence and him confidence to, you know, do something special. And and, and we've watched it this year in the 61 games that he's played. Interesting. I, uh, it's a great story. And like you said, bringing the mid range back and he's just, I like diversity in my NBA. I like diversity in my sports leagues. I like, I don't like that the NFL is a fourth, uh, Shanahan disciples now. Like it's just a fourth of the league is like running the same kind of zone uh, scheme. And it's it's cool that we're that the bulls are different um and we'll see like the eastern conference is it just that's what i love so much like you have the Cavs who are playing big you have the Cavs playing laurie at the three and then you have miami who another star who doesn't shoot threes jimmy butler is takes no threes like that man takes he lives for hard shots and getting fouled like that's all he's gonna do yep um I don't know. I just, I think it's gonna be fun. The Easter conference playoffs are going to be a blast. And I just, I can't, I can't wait. Yeah. As a fan, cause I know you said you're an Atlanta guy, obviously yeah. I'm a Chicago guy, but as a fan of the NBA and basketball in general, mm-hmm. like I have to just piggyback off what you said. I am so excited to watch the Eastern conference playoffs this year, especially for people like you and I, where the East mm-hmm. has sucked for the yes. majority of, I mean, what the two thousands, I mean, they were yes. just, not, it was not good at all. And now you kind of watch that whole thing flip. And not that I mean I care. I want to watch good Western Conference basketball too. But mm-hmm. it's 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 cool that our teams are in this conference that's a powerhouse. So if yes. you're able to get past one of them, I feel like it makes the pie a bit sweeter if you actually reach the mountaintop. You know, right? So, like I'm more. It, it probably goes for me like first round East and then second round West. Mm-hmm. Like I want to see Grizz Warriors. I want to see yeah, Suns luca versus steph potentially in round two like i want to see something like that like that is more interesting to me I, I just need to simulate the the first round out west um yeah buzz what can the good folks check out from you and the good folks over there on the bulls podcast and uh everything else that you got coming out this week uh yeah you can check us out at uh bulls on tap on twitter you can follow me at buzz on tap and for any of your written content you can go for chicago sports you can go to ontapsportsnet.com um after every single bulls game we are live on youtube Twitter and Facebook uh, doing a post game. And then usually have people in the comments section and we just kind of 
do a open floor community type thing where we just all talk about the game, what we saw, what we liked, what we didn't. Mm. And uh, yeah, that's where you can find us. There you go. There you go. Well, good luck the rest of the way, sir. Thank you so much for making the time. This was a lot of fun. And uh, we'll have to check back in again soon, man. Absolutely, man. Thanks for, thanks for having me on. Thank you.